What's up, gay straights and other days? It's Mally. I'm back with another episode of A Summer's End. We are back right where we left off on part two of our night out with Sam. And it, I'll admit, part one got a little dicey there, but hopefully part two saves us. So here we are at the fishbowl stand. Let's get right on into this. The popular fishbowl stand looked like any other. A stainless steel cart carried all the ingredients and supplies the owners needed to cook and conduct their business. They worked seamlessly in tandem, collecting payment and preparing one order after the next. It didn't take long for us to be next in line. Flavorful smells wafted into our nostrils. Oh, okay. We're next. Which one would you like to get? Oh, uh, which one is good? Spicy or non-spicy? The spicy is quite spicy. You can always get half and half if you want to try both. Okay. I'll get that. Okay. Excuse me, two half and half orders. It could be because I haven't eaten a full meal since lunch, but there was something about tonight that made the curry fish balls taste like something out of this world. They were something so ordinary, yet they tasted so extraordinary. It was delectably savory. The spicy ones had a good kick in them, too. We ate up a whole plate of them quickly on this side of the road. I wanted to get another set to eat. How did you like them? They're quite good, actually. Do you want another set? Sure, let me. I'll get it. I turned around swiftly. Aw. Oh no! Before I could react, a passerby quite forcibly bumped into my shoulder and knocked a paper plate containing leftover curry sauce out of my hands and onto my chest. Ah! Michelle! The sauce spilled all over onto my blouse, staining it a disastrous yellow brown. Oh no. It. Oh no. The curry sauce is all over you. Yeah. I can see that, Sam. It's my favorite blouse too. It's the only one I see you wear. I have to wash it off immediately or the blouse will be permanently stained. So, so um, does Sam live near here? Cause if so, um, that could totally work. Uh, I think I'll have to take the taxi home. No, I am sad. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't expect her to just fucking just say it like that. Oh no. Huh? Looking like baby puke? You should get yourself cleaned up a bit first. <laughs> baby puke? More like baby poop. Thanks, Sam. This is your fault. <laughs> You're the one who invited me out and caused all of this. Please tell me I'm messing around because no, I can't be serious. I shouldn't have tagged along with you in the first place. Wait, Michelle! Michelle! Come on! It... I'm sorry. Oh, you were serious. No, this is... <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. Uh, <laughs> I want to leave the cringe. Look, there's a 24 hour laundromat nearby. My apartment is just above. You can wait there while it's being washed. I knew it. I knew it was going to be an excuse to invite her over. Oh my goodness. This night is still salvageable. Uh, yeah, too, too late. What should I do? What do you think I'm going to pick if, if there's going to, if they're even going to give me a choice at this point, because they've only given me so few. What do you think I'm going to pick? I weighed my options carefully. The yellow-brown liquid was seeping further and further into my blouse. The sauce was still warm on my chest and the smell was oh so strong. If my silk brassiere were ha <laughs> That's what you're worried about? <laughs> and of course it's silk. The fucking co Michelle! <laughs> if my silk brassiere were to have a permanent brown stain, I would cry. I'm not laughing because of the word for bra. I know what bra is short for. I'm laughing because that's where our priorities are. You get hush. I wanted to blame Sam for this curry disaster. Well, then let her make it up to you by going over to hers. I know it wasn't actually her fault, but she should take some partial responsibility for this. It's the least she could do. Yes, she can. By inviting you over and paying for your laundry. The, the, it's right there. Come on, please, please. Okay, I, I don't have a choice. We're just gonna go over anyway. I'm fine with that. That's fine. <laughs> oh my god, her apartment is so cluttered, but like in a pleasant way. Oh my goodness, I love it. Hey, Michelle, I left for you a set of towels and some shirts you could change into out here. I get to wear one of your shirts? Oh, wait. Duh. Oh my goodness. Yay! Girlfriend shirt! Well, not girlfriend yet. You know what I mean. I'll bring your shirt to the cleaners and I'll come right back up. Just hang tight. Oh, I will. I, I most certainly will. Uh, okay. Uh, don't mind the messiness. It's it's like pleasant messiness though. Like it's not it's just cluttered I don't think it's actually messy. I'll tidy up when I come back. No, it looks lived in. It's fine. Sam <laughs> Thanks, I don't really mind Okay, make yourself at home Bye uh, I had Sam take my stained blouse and undershirt to the cleaners 
While she was gone, I changed into one of Sam's shirts. Wait, do we get to see? Please let me see. It was an odd turn in events. Yeah, but like, once you're together, this is gonna be a normal thing. <laughs> I was quite embarrassed. But at least I don't have to go around in public smelling like a fishball stand any longer. Oh, come on. Come on. This is the perfect excuse, but it's okay, fine, I guess. Oh. Oh my god. You would. You. <laughs> I'm sorry, we'll move on to our dialogue in a minute. From the brief time that I've known Sam, I know for a fact that she would probably have a closet full of like graphic tees and this would be like a handful of her shirts would be like the fancy colored. You would go for the fancy colored stuff even if you're just borrowing for like... <laughs> you fucking would. Oh my goodness. It's so baggy on you. Oh, this is so cute. But also, you... <laughs> you would go for the office shirt. Another inconvenient thing. Yeah. Inconvenient, sure. What's going on with my luck these days? It is going perfectly, Michelle. You stop your complaining right now. And right now I'm stuck in Sam's house until my clothes are finished washing. Oh no. I'm stuck in a beautiful woman's house who is also hella into me, but I haven't realized that yet because, you know, clueless lesbian. Oh no. What a tragedy to stay here for the 40 minute cycle and probably the hour long drying cycle. Unless you like to bring that shirt home wet or something. Oh no. I was so upset earlier. I know it wasn't Sam's fault. I have no one to blame except for myself. No. It was just an accident. You you don't have to blame anyone. Come on. Michelle. I took a look at myself in the mirror. Sam gave me a white button-up shirt for me to wear for the time being. Oh, Sam gave us the button-up shirt. Oh, well, that makes more sense. I saw our other clothes hanging in our open closet. Sam had quite an eclectic fashion sense. I should be thankful she picked out a plain white blouse for me to wear. It appeared to me the most normal looking item she owned. The sizing was similar to my own blouse, but the fitting was loose. Yeah, even I can tell how baggy it is on you. Like even actually just by the sleeves alone. The shoulders were baggy on my shoulders. The material was thin. I felt a draft. Ugh. Things just keep happening when I'm around her, huh? <laughs> oh my God. I've definitely missed the last train out. Oh no. Oh no, here we go again. We have to sleep over at a gorgeous woman's house. Oh no. I'm just saying there could be worse circumstances, <laughs> okay? Between taking a taxi home covered in curry sauce or going to Sam's apartment to wash up, I chose the latter option. Gee, I wonder why. I wanted at least to limit the embarrassment to as few people as possible. <laughs> sure. I didn't want to leave washing my soiled clothes for another day. Getting rid of that stain was a time sensitive issue. Keep making the gay excuses. Yeah, keep keep going with that. Yep, sure. I figured my mother wouldn't appreciate it if I turned on the washing machine in the late night. Yeah, uh-huh, sure. Luckily, there just happened to be a 24-hour laundromat nearby, and Sam's apartment was just above. Her place was less than 200 meters from the station. Not a bad location, I have to say. Uh-huh. She lived in a small studio apartment. Her small twin-sized bed was a few steps away from the kitchen that only had a portable gas stove and a microwave. There was a small refrigerator, of course, but there was nothing otherwise in the kitchen that would have indicated that it was a place for gourmet cooking. Well, duh. They say that the kitchen is the heart of the home. In Sam's case, it was quite the opposite, but while our kitchen might have been quite nondescript, the many personal belongings that filled her den was where she showed her taste. It was not dissimilar to her video store. Yeah, it's comfortably crowded, quite cluttered. That's what I've been saying. I saw fashion magazines, books, tapes, and records stacked about in a disorderly fashion. On the contrary, she arranged her collection of photo books neatly. An old Leica camera stood out on her shelf. It appeared broken, however. Her television set sat on top of a VCR player. I also saw that it was connected to a laser disc player, I guess for watching all her movies. There was so much personality in this small apartment. She made use of her balcony space as well and had left some laundry hanging. I know she kept houseplants by the window. They were ordinary potted plants, though they appeared to be wilting. Oh. They seemed to say, please water me, I'm on the verge of death. <laughs> Come on, Michelle, water them. Do it. I should heat their cries for mercy and water them. I'll borrow a cup. <laughs> I found a cup in her kitchen cupboard. At least her dishes were done and put away. I wondered if Sam lived alone. Well, it looks like it, probably. From what I saw, it didn't appear to be anyone else living with her. She didn't have a sofa. Nor did she have any other notable pieces of furniture besides a bed and a low table. Was this a comfortable way to live? Yeah, it's pretty cozy, actually. It would be weird for me to sit down on her bed or kneel on her floor. Well, usually when you come over to someone else's place, it's usually where you sit. 
okay. I stood by the balcony door and curiously looked outside. It seemed like people were still going about their daily business on the street below. It must get noisy sometimes at night here. It felt so strange to be here like this, standing around in someone else's clothes in someone else's apartment. I hope Sam didn't mind too much about today. Well, you did kind of blame her for what happened, but other than that, I think you're fine. Michelle? Oh, hi. I'm back. Ah. Oh, you were watering the plants? Thank you. <laughs> it's fine. It, it's not, not a problem. It's the least I can do after, you know, blaming you for everything. I keep forgetting to water them. If they look so pitiful, please consider them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but they're still alive somehow. If you don't take care of them properly, sooner or later, they'll wither away and die. Okay, okay. Your blouse will be done in an hour. We can pick them up from the laundromat when they're done. Thank you so much. I've been a bother to you all night. It's gotten late now. It's no bother at all. It was all my fault that things didn't go well today. No! Now she's actually blaming herself! Michelle, fix this! No, it wasn't. I had a good time, really. Don't blame yourself. I see. I'm glad. <sighs> Would you like to watch something on TV while waiting? I, I don't want to intrude too much. Don't worry. How about I put on a record? Just take a seat and relax. Um, where? Michelle doesn't want us to sit on the floor or your bed, so um, where exactly? <laughs> Let me grab you something to drink. Oh, it it's fine. I'm not thirsty. Coke? I have Coke. Tepid water is good then. <laughs> Michelle! Just water? You don't need to be so reserved. Why don't I make some warm tea? Would that be alright with you? <sighs> sure. Tea would be fine. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> My awkward little bean. Oh. <laughs> Michelle! Sam put on a record and went over to the kitchen to make some tea. She had me sit on her bed while I waited. I saw from the cover jacket that it was a Dini LP record. She was a popular singer and actress, but I never listened to this particular album before. I was surprised when I saw Sam take out a vinyl record. I would have thought that someone like Sam would have gotten a compact disc player by now. I listened to the music. It was a soft funk song. I think it was a Cantonese cover of an English song. Sighing softly, break my heart, don't know this song so I can't sing along. <laughs> I watched Sam boil water using a portable gas stove. I giggle a little bit. I suppose Sam is more old school than I first thought. Um, I think the retro t-shirt gave it away, but I guess. Sighing softly without saying a word, Sam with her back towards me made me feel a little lonesome. Okay, then talk. <laughs> the water didn't take too long to boil. The little blue flame danced quietly to the music. Before the song had finished, Sam came back with a set of teacups. She had made oolong tea. Oh, I love oolong tea, that's great. I took a sip. It was warming. It didn't taste too bitter. I hope you don't mind the place. No, not at all. I know it's a little cramped. I haven't gotten around to sorting out some things. No. It's fine as it is. Your place is close to the station. It's convenient, isn't it? It is. The song you played earlier. Could you play it again? I kind of like it. Of course, it's my favorite song. Meant to be, meant to be, oh my goodness. You share the, literally the same favorite song. It is meant to be, oh my goodness. You two are so cute. <gasps> Wait, it's gonna become your song. Ah, it's gonna be so cute. Really? I guess I'm showing my age. <laughs> How old are you, Sam? How old are you exactly? What do you mean? The disco is good fun, but a part of me is stuck in the days of folk and funk. You know, years ago, Ruby used to be an old funk bar. It was never this flashy until Cecilia took over. I see. Wait, how old are we exactly? And how old are you? Did it ever say? I don't know. <laughs> you two have known each other long. I suppose so. <sighs> About earlier. I'm sorry. What for? I didn't mean to yell at you. Or take away your evening with your friend. You didn't. <sighs> I shouldn't have acted that way. I guess I was being selfish. Selfish? In what way? I... I don't know. Maybe you should be a little more selfish around me. Sam! What does that mean? Sam shifted herself closer to me on the bed. Oh? Oh? Hello? My legs suddenly cramped. <laughs> Do not tell me! We are going to get blocked by a fucking leg cramp! Michelle! Suck it up! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> 
I stood up quick. <laughs> Michelle! Michelle, I'll say it was. I said it again. You are your own pussy block. I have a leg cramp. <laughs> well, mate, at least now she won't think that you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> it's your fault. You're the reason for the slow burn. Usually it's the other person. No, it's you. It is you. Oh my god. Sam laughed. Good. I'm glad she finds this funny. God. I felt flushed. Oh my god. I've been sitting around all day. I needed to walk around a bit. Walk into her arms. My eyes turned towards the photos that Sam displayed on her wall. Sam had quite an amount of photos on display. I looked through them slowly. Hmm? What are you looking at? Um, your photos. Uh, I'm not allowed to look. Oh no, please. They're so embarrassing. Then, then why do you have them up? <laughs> oh my god, baby! Oh, precious. I noticed that Sam had a framed picture of herself from when she was in high school. You look adorable. What the fuck are you talking? Oh, and your hair's short. Oh, you're so cute. Ah, oh, Sam. She went to a notable Catholic girls school. Oh. Oh. Uh. E. And in this time period, oh no. Sam. Ah. Uh. I was surprised I had university classmates who went to the same school. They were prim and proper dainty girls, not at all similar to Sam. Well, uh, you know what, I'm not gonna get into it. The Sam in this photo looked like a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed student. <laughs> Did you just call your future girlfriend a squirrel? Her smile was not much different from the way it is now. There was a playfulness in her expression. Yeah, yeah, she's so cute. It was cute. Yay! Michelle and I are finally on the same page. It was like seeing a before and after puppy photo. Okay, I gotta. My cheeks are gonna be bruised by the amount of times I keep going. But aww! Aww! And I'm a dog person, so this is just perfect. Aww. Wait. <laughs> you have never written down the facial expressions on me, me, Michelle, but you felt the need to write smirk there as if I wasn't doing. <laughs> Game. <laughs> no, you wrote it down. I'm gonna read it. Smirk. That's what you get for writing down facial expressions. What the fuck? <laughs> huh? I saw you smirk. Yeah, so did I. It's written in the. And you could have just, <laughs> you could have just kept it in the dialogue. You didn't have to. <laughs> oh, I love being a writer while I'm reading these. Oh my god. <laughs> Your smile has never changed. Or you used to look. So used to. She's still cute, but I mean. Now it's a little more of... <laughs> you know what? Let's tease her a little bit, because I feel like this is the more flirty option. You used to look so cute. You were so cute when you were young. When I was young? <laughs> Sam, no, I tried to tease you. You look so keen in this photo. What do you mean by that? I'll let you know I was the top of my class in math. Oh, good. You can help me, because I'm shit at math. At one point, I had a sign-up list for classmates who wanted to be tutored by me. Huh? Really? <laughs> That's really impressive. A sign-up list? I can't believe it. It's true. I was good at teaching people how to ace the tests. Alright, alright, I believe you. Do you really? I do. I'm sure your underclassmen really looked up to you. What's that? Are you being sarcastic? I'm not. <laughs> Here, I'll show you a funny photo. Okay. Eh? Sam pointed to an odd photo. Who's that in this photo? It was a photo of a teenage Sam flanked by two muscular men. They were at a picturesque beach. One man I recognized as her father. He was wearing an undershirt posed for the camera with his arms flexed. <laughs> Aw, her dad's just as much of a dork as she is. Aw, cute. The other man in the photo was much younger than her father. Brother? He was bare-chested and proudly displayed his muscles. Young Sam was dressed in casual wear. She wore a short sleeve shirt and shorts. She stood plainly in the center of the photo. She looked displeased. <laughs> it was an unusual picture. Oh, that guy? That's my older brother. Yeah, I knew it was your brother. I figured it out immediately. Uh, really? He and my dad liked to bodybuild at one point. <laughs> Am I ever gonna meet this brother? Uh, this was taken when I went with my dad to visit my brother in California for his wedding. Aw, cute. Your brother was married at that time? Yup. I see. He looked so young in this photo. 
He is five years my senior. He had gone to California to study when he was 19, and not long after, he called and told us that he was getting married. From his last Christmas card, I think he and his wife are onto their fourth child now. Jesus, four kids! Like, more power to you if that's your thing, but I personally don't want kids but four! Holy hell, okay, good for you! That's impressive. Do you have siblings? Uh, no, I'm an only child, and that's where our similarities end. Well, they ended a long time ago, but... <laughs> I have a little sister. Ah, uh, I see. Do you get lonely without your brother around? Not really. He teased me a lot when I was a child. He called me names like Bucktooth Billy. Oh, baby. There was one time he set fireworks off in the house and blamed it on me. Jesus. Clearly, I was my parents' favorite child. We bickered a lot as children. I guess we didn't bond much in part because of our age difference. I think that's nice, though. I didn't have anyone like that growing up. It was just my mother and father. I'm not sure about a brother, but I always thought having an older sister would be nice. Um, that, hmm, it's gonna depend on the age difference. Is that so? You would make a lovely younger sister, I'm sure. <sighs> Sam showed me more of her photos. There are a number of photos of herself as a child. She seemed like a happy child who liked to sing and dance. A wide, toothy smile could be seen in all her baby photos. Sam must have been quite an endearing child to her parents and a sweet sister to her brother. When I see her smile like that, I could feel that Sam came from a loving family. When I think about my own childhood photos, I wasn't as cute or photogenic as Sam. Usually the camera flash would catch me with wide open eyes and a stiff expression, much like an animal in headlights. Hey, I always frowned in my childhood photos. I did not look happy. You're fine. My father liked to take a lot of photos when I was a child. After he passed away, there weren't many photos taken of me with my mother. My father's camera was kept in a storage box somewhere. Thinking about it made me feel a little sad. It was heartwarming to see that Sam treasured her family photos. I noticed one particular photo. It was larger than all the other photos she had. It was framed and hung on the wall. Oh, wait, who? Who is this? Is this your mom? Huh? It's an old picture. That must be your mother. Huh. Because, uh, I believe Sam mentioned that her mother passed away, I think. Because I remember in my head going, like, they're the opposite of each other. I lost my dad and she lost her mom. That must be her mother. You have to show me your pictures next time for it to be even, alright? <laughs> oh no, they're too embarrassing. Hey, that's not fair. I want to see you as a baby, too. <laughs> I continued chatting with Sam about her childhood while we waited. Time seemed languid. I didn't feel tired at all. Earlier, when I was with Sam in the disco, it was so loud and busy, I couldn't really talk in depth with Sam. When we talked here at her place, there was something about Sam that reminded me of an old school friend. The way we could talk frankly without having to show face was refreshing. With coworkers or even with relatives, needing someone always involved showing proper respect and courtesy. It also involved a bit of showboating of one's education and wealth as well. It was strange this time I shared with Sam. I had misjudged Sam earlier. I shouldn't let my prejudices influence my judgment of another person's character. We seek meaning in our lives one way or another. Why are you talking like it's the end of the game, Michelle? <laughs> That's just life, for anyone and everyone in this city. When I was with Sam like this, I felt at ease. It was as if I was visiting a cousin's home despite this being our second meeting. Well, maybe if you continue bonding and all that Sam can be like your sort of anchor, maybe you can try the bar again, but this time you'll be a bit more comfy with her. Oh, that can be so cute, okay. Though sometimes when I turned away, I caught her glance. Yeah, because she's appreciating what she sees. And you need to stop having leg cramps right when she's about to try and kiss us. Jeez. Or at least, like, admit her feelings. Like, <laughs> There was an odd feeling. I didn't know how to explain it. Yeah, it's called the gay. <laughs> this awkward tension between us. I noticed sometimes her hand would brush lightly against mine when we were next to each other. She leaned in close to talk. I noticed her eyes looked for my reaction whenever she made a funny quip or compliment. Oh. Baby wants our approval. Sam, you're so cute. I felt as if if I stayed here longer, something more. Oh, huh? I've completely forgotten about the time. God damn it! God damn it, Michelle! Ah! There's never gonna be something more at this rate because you, you. <laughs> I have completely forgotten about the time. Could I borrow your phone? Yes, of course. Oh, you're calling your mother. Good, good, don't, don't fucking leave. leave. It's next to television. I'll stop the record, one second. Thanks. 
I had forgotten to let my mother know that I would be late coming home. Okay, good. You're not just good. I wanted for her to at least not be waiting up for me. I made her worry the other night. I dialed my own number with Sam's rotary phone. I should know my own phone number by heart, but my fingers felt clumsy. I kept misdialing. I eventually dialed the correct number. The line connected right away. Hello? Mother? I'm phoning to let you know. Yes, I'm on my way home. No, it won't be long. Please don't worry about me and rest. I know. I know it's very late. I just wanted to let you know I'm all right. Huh? No, nothing of the sort. Something came up. Where am I? I'm just... I'm just... I'm just at work. It's been a busy day. I had something to eat, so please, you don't have to wait for me. I'll be home as soon as I can. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'll take a taxi home. Wait. Why are we lying? Bye. Why are we lying? It's okay. We're just friends right now, so we can say that we're just at a friend's place and our shirt's at the laundromat. Like, Michelle, why are we lying? I ended the call in a hurry. There was a suspicious tone in my mother's voice. When she has her doubts, she would persist to question me. I had to cut the conversation short. I couldn't tell her that I went to a pub with Sam. Well, you don't have to. You can just say that you went out with a friend for a bit and lost track of... Why are you hiding Sam? Like, okay, given the time period, I would understand hiding maybe your relationship with Sam, but you're, you don't have that kind of relationship yet. Like, why are you hiding Sam? Wait, why? That would set off a thousand more questions. My mother associated pubs with degenerate behavior. Well, given the time period, I guess, but come on, why are you hiding her? Even if I didn't do anything bad, she would assume that I did. Well, that's just shitty. I was not that kind of person. No, I know. It's okay. Why does she have to make me feel guilty about every little thing? <sighs> you finished your call? Yes. Why did you lie to your mother about being at work? There's nothing you need to hide. Uh, wh why were you listening in? I just overheard. Yeah, it, It's a small space, Michelle. The... You would have to whisper in her f order for her not to hear you. Come on. It's... It's easier to explain to my mother that I'm at work instead of... Instead of whatever happened earlier. The disco? You could tell her you were with a friend eating late night snacks and having a chat. She won't believe that. My mother is the traditional type. Anything past 10 p.m. is considered late for her. If she knew I went to a disco, she jumped to the conclusion that I was out doing something else. Really? Is it so wrong to be out late? It's... It's not wrong. It's just... For my mother, she thinks it's not appropriate to be out late as a woman. She associates any nightlife with bad behavior. I wouldn't want her to misunderstand. Huh. I see. Your mother must be worried about you. I can send you back now if you want. You can pick up the shirt for me another day. I can take care of it. It shouldn't be long now, right? I've already been a bother to you. You could have had a good time in the disco instead if it wasn't for me. No, you don't need to keep saying that. I had a good time with you. Uh, I have to be honest with you. I might just be one of the bad girls your mother warned you about. 